Hey everyone, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm an intensivist. The article that I'm going to be taking apart today is titled Association Between Soft Drink Consumption and Mortality in 10 European Countries. It was published on the 3rd of this month, this month being September, and today is the 7th of September of 2019. This is my interpretation of the article and I may, may, may be making some errors. I'm not a statistical genius, I am a boots on the ground, bedside intensivist, not in academia, trying to do the best for my patients. I am human, I do make mistakes. If you learned anything from this video, hit the like button and or comment on my video. It helps the YouTube algorithm promote my page and therefore these articles and videos get to more people, more people learn, patients do better. Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, it's the same handle, at EddieJoeMD, as well as quick reference to my website eddiejoemd.com that has the links to this article as well as many articles that I share on YouTube and Instagram. Check the description box below. Now that that's all over with, let's go ahead and get started talking about this cool, cool article. Alright, so moving over to my iPad over here. Let me just finish here, slide over here. Alright, so like I said, this, this article is titled, The Association Between Soft Drink Consumption and Mortality in 10 European Countries. First and foremost, like I always do, hat tip to all of these authors over here. They did a really, really good job on this article, and I'm happy with, you know, what they got from it. So, the study is trying to tell me, as well as you and everybody in this world, that soft drinks, whether they're diet or sweetened by sugar, are associated with higher mortality. Can I say I'm surprised? Not really. I'm just honestly glad that I'm not like Warren Buffett investing in the Coca-Cola company because that, that stock might take a hit. Anyway, I'm not your financial advisor. I personally do not drink sodas, but every now and then I just fall for a Diet Dr. Pepper. I guess I'll be cutting that out soon. But you're here for data, not for me rambling. But I will say that I'm going to omit some of the data because I can't analyze everything in the study and cover it all. But let's take a good look at it. So they started off by stating that sugar-sweetened drinks could cause appro approximately 184,000 deaths due to cardiovascular issues, cancer, and diabetes. That's a lot of death. To look at these numbers in Europe, where the study took place, they used what they call the European Prospective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition Cohort that has followed patients from the general population from 10 different European countries, which include Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and the UK. Now, in the United States where I'm at and have lived the majority of my life, we tend to think of those countries as being healthier than us. So if their mortality numbers are significant, just, just imagine if we were to do a study that, that's this large in the United States. Now, this quote, epic cohort, and I say, quote, epic because, you know, it's a big epic cohort and, uh, you know, the study group is called the epic, anyway, uh, had <laughs> over half a million patients in it, <clears throat> excuse me, it had a total of 521,330 patients in it, but they did rule out a number of patients for reasons that were specified in the paper, and they ended up with 451,743 patients in total in that study, which is this number. And huh, I wonder how visible this is going to be, which is that number right there. That's a lot of that's a lot of people. And then these people were recruited between 1992 and 2000, so it was over a large period of time. Now, the famously large Framingham Heart Study has been going on for approximately 70 years now, and doesn't have a remotely doesn't have anything close to this many patients. Okay, so I thought that this was pretty pretty cool. Now, how did they figure out how much these patients consumed? Well, they did it via interviews and questionnaires. The problem with doing interviews is that and questionnaires that people tend to lie. That's a limitation that I I gathered myself. However, the authors didn't, you know, state that in, in their study. Uh, but then again, they did have half a million people, so we're all gonna count on the fact that there are fewer liars than we really think. Also, they did ask other questions like smoking, exercise habit, and the questionnaire. So this data is not only for soft drink consumption. In addition to that, they used ICD-10 codes to um, kind of figure out what were the reasons why the 41,693 people who died during the time you know that they were compiling this data, why they died. Then this, the researchers did a bunch of statistical jumping jacks that I'm definitely not going to go through. 
And um, I'm honestly going to, they did a bunch of subgroup different analyses. I'm not going to get into that because we would all fall asleep while listening to this. And I don't want this talk to go on for half an hour. I think 10 minutes will be enough for this. Okay. So I do lump together uh, both the patients who are drinking soft drinks with sugar and soft drinks with artificial sweeteners. Again, read the article for yourself. Now, let me go into some of the things that I found interesting about the study as I'm going to bring up this particular slide so I can do some of my editing. Thank you for bearing with me as I tap, tap, tap. Okay, cool. All right, here's some of the things that I found interesting from the groups. Overall, and I don't think that this is listed here on the, on the, on the abstract. Nope, it's not. Um, amongst all the patients, 43.2% of patients died from cancer. I thought that that was pretty interesting. Then in the group, uh, the group that drank less than one glass per day, women made up 75, excuse me, 76.5% of the group, but the, the group that women, excuse me, that drank greater than or equal to two glasses a day, women uh, basically made up 60.9% of that study. It's also uh, cool to see that the BMI was, from a median standpoint, one point higher in those who drink uh, more than two glasses per day compared to those who drink less than one glass per day. Excuse me a second. Okay, then, uh, sorry, I was looking at my phone really quick, I got a text. So the other thing is that the patients who drank greater than or equal to two glasses per day claim to be more physically active with uh, 28 point, excuse me, 27.8% of them saying that they're physically active versus 15.5% in the group that, that would consume less than one glass per day. In addition to that, the patients who had greater than or equal to two glasses of soft drinks per day also tended to eat more red meat, fewer fruits and vegetables, more coffee, and more fruit and vegetable juices. That's something to keep in mind here, okay? Because those are all factors that in some way, shape, or form uh, have been associated historically with, uh, with death of one form or another. There was no notable difference in alcohol consumption, at least when I looked at the data. So let's talk a little bit about mortality. They did find that there was higher all-cause mortality in the patients with greater than or equal to two glasses of soft drinks per day, and that included both sugar sweetened and artificially sweetened. This also included if you were male or female. And then with regards to circulatory diseases, the same thing occurred here, that there were, there were higher circulatory mortality risks for those, for those consuming greater than or equal to two glasses of soft drinks per day. If you break it down between the sugar versus artificial groups, artificial sweetener groups, excuse me, the sugar group was not statistically significant. I guess that could be interpreted as don't drink the diet stuff. Now with regards to cancer, this was interesting because they found an association only with colorectal cancer deaths. I found I expect them to find a, an increased risk with overall cancer, but when they looked at prostate, breast cancer, etc., there was no increased risk. Now, there was an association with soft drinks, both types, with the risk of Parkinson's disease mortality. I thought that that was interesting. Um, all in all, the researchers found higher risks were observed with people who would consume more than just 125 cc's or 125 milliliters of diet stuff and just 250 cc's, just one glass of the non-diet stuff. I wonder, like, one of, one of the things I didn't notice in the study is what they considered high fructose corn syrup to be. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the composition of the soft drinks in Europe, if I'm being honest. If you know what it is, if it's sugar versus high fructose corn syrup, let me know in the comment section below. They were also perplexed as to why artificial sweeteners cause the increase in mortality despite being, quote, zero calorie. They don't have an answer to this. They don't, uh, they honestly don't get into that too much. They say that we need more data. Now, as with every other study that exists, there are notable limitations. And in this case, it's an observational study. I mean, just imagine doing a randomized control uh, trial and give people soda versus not. That, that just wouldn't be, be feasible. Um, they also cannot identify causality. There's an association, but they can't say that sodas are the cause of their death. Now, the fact that it was so statistically significant, uh, that's, that's pretty important. But overall, like I said, they cannot, they cannot say causality based on this. 
The other thing that was kind of kind of funny about this is that they only asked the people in the study just once, only the first time that they were doing the surveys, whether they consumed soft drinks or not. That means that patients could have changed their habits, either started consuming soft drinks or stopped, or they could have switched over to diet or switched to regular. There's no way of knowing. But I don't know. I just thought this, this study was fascinating, and uh, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And, and all in all, the, the authors concluded that they found that the consumption of total sugar sweetened and artificially sweetened soft drinks was positively associated with all-cause deaths in this large European cohort. The results are supportive of public health campaigns aimed at limiting the consumption of soft drinks. Overall, I know that the media is in a frenzy right now with this study, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I hope you all gain something from it. Again, hat tip to the authors. Great job on this study. I hope you all learned something. Give me a thumbs up. Help the channel grow. All that fun stuff, guys. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.